I am 32 years old and my wife also 32, she had an affair with my best friend. We have had four months of reconciliation but struggling. My wife and I have been married for five years and have had our ups and downs. She has struggled with depression, ADHD, and chronic fatigue her whole adult life, and much of our marriage has felt like I have been in the caretaker role. Her one goal in life is to have children and be a mother, but we've also been unable to conceive for two years. We spent 25k on IVF treatments, but I had to deploy for six months before we were able to do embryo implants. During that time her depression got worse. The inability to conceive, being pulled from her family and friend support structure when we got married, and me leaving left her feeling completely lost. I asked my best friend, a friend I gave seven years of empathy and compassion to, a true brother to me, to check in on her and make sure she was okay while I was gone. The same thing I did for his wife while he was deployed, well, not exactly the same. They started texting, the texts turned toward inappropriate topics, and the next visit they got drunk and had sex. The texts, phone calls, and continued for two months, I could tell something was wrong. She'd call me crying saying she was a bad wife. I noticed my ring cameras didn't have hourly screenshots sometimes, or they'd be down altogether. I saw him visit one time and could only hear, I'm not gonna do that, not right here, as he left the front door. Another time I saw him watch her go back inside, then look up at the camera as he left. If you've looked at a woman that way before, you can just tell, you know? I convinced myself I was crazy, that it was my own insecurities that made me doubt the two people I trusted more than anyone in life. Then she called me and told me she was texting him and had feelings for him. Okay, that's okay, we can work on that. Thank you for telling me. Well that night my curiosity and insecurity lead me to our cell phone statements and there were thousands of texts and quite a few late night hour long phone calls to a number I didn't recognize. I called her at 5 am, her time, and blew them all up a storm. Turns out he was there that morning, in my bed, but I didn't find out till later. Fast forward. I put an end to any and all contact between him and us, we went into counseling immediately, and we've been getting better over the last four months, but now I'm a bit lost. I want to say that I'm not mad at my wife. I'm hurt of course, but I actually understand why she did what she did. I believe she was a different person during that time because of her illness. And she has made amazing progress since. We got real help, new treatments, she got a new job, and we're on the road to recovery. But we went on vacation this week and a switch just turned in my head. From day one I've been in fight mode. I'm not a flight mode kind of guy. I wanted to protect my life, to take control of it, and prevent anyone from stealing what I had worked so hard to build. But here I am on vacation, away from all the other life requirements like work, pets, house, hobbies, and I find myself wanting to be with a group of people I just met instead of next to my wife. I'm thinking, don't I deserve to love life, not just exist in it? I've spent so much of my life putting everyone else ahead of me, maybe I should be selfish for a change. From day one I never gave any credit to the idea of separation. Giving up on us wasn't an option. I finally told a buddy of mine, finally told my mom, both of them said that a separation might be a good idea to see how I really feel. It was the first time anyone told me it's okay to think about the other option, and it felt great to hear. I love my wife. I would climb mountains for her happiness. My feelings just aren't the same. It's not her fault. It's not my fault. I think we'd be in a worse place if she didn't cheat TBH because she would have never gotten help and I would still be climbing that never-ending mountain. We're going home tomorrow, and I don't know what our next step will be, but I wanted to post my story. Thanks for listening. Comments. 1. First, sorry of your situation. I will give my story. At the time, my girl of 14 years wanted kids. We too failed, and at that time she was turning 30 and wanted all her kids by 30. We had none. We were hanging out with a younger married couple. He was 23. She had an affair with him. I took her back. We continued to try for kids. Never came. When she turned 43 she had a hysterectomy. That is when things went more south. She meet a man with grown sons. She ended up leaving me after 26 years together. 
She is married to him and I am a 50 plus year old single man with no kids. Don't become me, too. Consider this a tumor removed from you, I know easier said than done. But your experience reaffirms that never give cheater another chance. 4. This is going to be tough to hear, but your situation is a tale as old as time, she's a dependa who found her, Jody. It made her feel good so she'll do it again. But next time she'll be less guilty since she's already crossed the adultery line. 5. That could easily happen to you if you stay W this ungrateful excuse for a partner. The best way to make a real decision about this is to separate, go no contact and do psychotherapy. There is something wrong W someone internally that would stay W this woman, but defriend the BFF. They are equally at fault. You need to step away from the trauma bond and process this for at least a few months while you make your decision. 6. You are wrong. It is your wife's fault. There are millions of people who struggle with emotional problems, but most do not choose to cheat. She chose to betray you. I think you know this but refuse to admit it. This is the source of the struggle. If you are serious about repairing things with your wife, the first step is holding her responsible for her actions. As long as you keep trying to make excuses, this will never work. OP, I held her responsible. I don't mean the cheating isn't her fault, it is. I mean our damaged relationship. The affair plays a part, but I think it's also something bigger, more a sum of all parts kind of thing. We're both trying really hard, and I respect her for what she's given up for me. The affair is her fault and it's his fault. If people need to hear me say that, then carrot there it is. I do appreciate the sub support, and I agree the harmed party should be lifted up. We didn't deserve the trauma that comes with cheating. 7. I agree with your mom and friend. This wasn't a one time, we got drunk during a visit and made a bad choice. This was premeditated, let's both betray someone we love and never tell him it happened. Your wife is a liar. You have no idea if you can trust her ever again. If she can betray you, the person she's supposed to love more than anyone, then she's already made her morals and position on cheating known to you. It would be foolish to stay with someone of such low moral character. 8. My brother's ex-wife used that excuse as a buffer. In her mind it softened her responsibility for the foul-slash-cheating as if her being inebriated removed nine-tenth of the blame from her. Thankfully he didn't buy into it. He kicked her out the morning she was confronted and filed for custody of their kid that same day. 9. If she hasn't apologized to you and told you what she'll do to earn your trust back, including complete access to her phone and computer, etc., etc. then she's not sorry. It's her responsibility to make you want to stay, not vice versa. If you don't feel good about the situation, what is she going to do? If the answer is nothing then you already know what you need to do. Your former friend is a creep but your wife made the vows. Edit, unforeseen blessing you all don't have kids yet until you figure this out. OP, she has 100% done all that. I have whatever access I want. But it doesn't matter, the fact that I have anxiety when she looks at her phone isn't a state of being I want to exist in, even if I know she's not doing anything wrong, the anxiety is still there. I hung on for six years post cheating with my son's dad. The feeling of hopeless and wondering if you deserve more in life doesn't go away. It grows. Do yourself a favor and put yourself first. This is your life. Don't waste it tethered to a woman who doesn't love or respect you enough to stay faithful to you. 10. Sometimes the body just next recovers. I suggest you read, The Body Keeps the Score. Seems absolutely a trial separation with limited contact is necessary. Honestly, infidelity has a very small survival rate. Around 15% of couples are still together 5 years later. Add in military life as a stressor and those percentages drop even more. Focus on your needs. OP, yeah, I think my heart has been lagging behind my head. I need to focus on what I want from life, not what I think is the right thing to do. 11. Reconciliation requires certain things, and one of the requirements were not met, which is admitting and showing remorse. She, and he, would have continued if you hadn't caught on and blew it up. You say you think she was a different person, that her depression is the cause. 
But you also state that she has been plagued with depression her whole life. That is her natural state. Yes, her behavior is unnatural and undesired, but it who she is without medication and constant emotional struggle. So she wasn't forthcoming with her betrayal, and was in fact gaslighting and minimizing her betrayal. This shows a lack of respect. And while she got help and therapy, her issues are still there, which impedes your ability to trust her. I do not accept emotional illness as an excuse in this case. She lied, covered up, and minimized before she acted, which means she knew it was wrong, which means she could have stopped herself at any point before that. You can't love someone you don't trust, she can't love you if she doesn't respect you. OP, I do want to say that she has shown immense amounts of remorse since. She liked it to being shaken out of a dream, or a nightmare she couldn't see was a nightmare. She is truly devastated about what she did and how she hurt me. But you are right, you can't love someone you don't trust. That's where I'm at right now.